Today we head to Ireland to explore an abandoned castle that is central to both a humorous legend and a history of conflict. Grenon Castle was built by Thomas Fitz Anthony, a Norman knight serving King John of England in the 1200s. Thomas reached Ireland as a follower of William Marshall who was son-in-law of Strongbow. He was tasked with carrying over Henry II's treasure to the island and was later, around 1200, granted a large land area named Grenon or Sunny Place in Gaelic. In 1210, King John stopped by the area to visit. Two years later, Thomas signed a declaration supporting King John against Stephen Langton, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who had been appointed by Pope Innocent III over John's protests, which had then caused the king to be excommunicated in 1209. From here, Thomas quickly gained the title of Governor of the Province of Leinster in 1215, which he held until 1223. He then built a new fortified town to be a marketplace for trade on the river. This town today is now named Thomastown after its founder. The castle we explore today was a classic, if large, Irish tower house, some 3,000 of which once existed. It was originally 60 feet by 40 feet and 50 feet tall with 9 foot thick walls. The one entrance was on the river facing side and elevated from the ground by at least 6 feet. The first story had two levels, one serving as a basement and wine cellar, and three large chambers with a stair to the second floor which led to a trap door that could be raised like a drawbridge to prevent entry. The second floor contained a 45 foot long great hall and the floors above had bedrooms. This stone keep was surrounded by a water filled ditch still visible in aerial maps. After the castle was built, Thomas gained even more power after helping King John fight the revolting English barons. He was then given a grant of the royal lands of County Waterford and lands in Cork that he had conquered. With the rise of Henry III as king, he also came to control the area of Desmond along with Shannon Castle. During his later life, Thomas fell afoul of the teenage king's council, having been accused of withholding royal money from his lands and opposing further English settlers immigrating to Ireland. By 1223, he was stripped of his royal lands and also the governorship of Leinster and Cork. Upon Thomas Fitzanthony's death in 1227, the lands were divided among his five daughters, along with his large debts. Helen, Dionysus, Isabella, Marjorie, and Desiree all were to marry local knights. Dionysia died without heirs after marrying William de Cantalope. Marjorie married John Fitzthomas Fitzgerald, who founded the town of Tralee and attacked the Irish building castles south into Kerry, Limerick, and Cork. In later years, his descendants would become the Earls of Desmond. Helen married Gerald de Rue and had a daughter, Emma, who married William Den, Sheriff of Wexford, who inherited the castle and its lands in 1247. In 1261, tragedy struck the families when John Fitzthomas Fitzgerald was killed in the Battle of Callan in 1261 fighting against the McCarthy, O'Sullivan, and O'Donoghue clans. Also killed in the battle was his son Maurice and his brothers-in-law, Gerald de Roop and William Den. Isabella had married Geoffrey de Norag, who supported Richard Marshall, Earl of Pembroke, against Henry III. The Earl fled to Ireland and was defeated. Geoffrey and Richard's other followers had their lands seized. Desiree would marry a Stephen Archdeacon, and they were involved in a lawsuit for the Fitzanthony estate lands, gaining some of the old lands near to the Den families. Thus, the Archdeacons and the Dens came to control the lands around the castle. The Dens inherited the castle itself and the lands next to it, and the Archdeacons the lands across the river, along with the now abandoned mansion we explored at the link here. These two family branches of the Thomas descendants were often in conflict. The most famous Den member was Sir Reginald, who died in 1304. In 1319, Sir Thomas Den was governor of Wexford, and his successor, Falk Den, was sheriff of Kilkenny before dying in 1370. Shortly after this, a strange story becomes associated with the castle. The Den Lord had become more Irish than the Irish and refused to pay taxes, enraging Richard II. He swore to have the Lord of the Castle's head on a platter on his own feast hall table and landed in either 1395 or 1399. During one of his two trips to Ireland, he set out to the castle, landing on the coast with a group of men and heading down the road to Grenon. After a few miles, the party began to find casks of red wine left for them every mile, which the men began to drink. Upon reaching Grenon, they were quite drunk and were welcomed in by the lady of the castle. Soon they were ushered upstairs to partake of a feast in the Great Hall, but there was still no sign of Sir Dan. 
After some time, a large covered platter in the center of the table had its lid lifted, revealing the bloody head of Den. Richard II exclaimed, As grace be mine, I'm sorry for the good night's wine. I'd give a dozen of my men, for thy one life, my outlaw Den. It was then that the lady drew back the table, revealing Den, who kneeled under it, with his head through a hole, wearing the platter like a collar. The king pardoned him then and there, allowing him to keep the castle if he kept his peace. Richard then thanked the lady for the banquet and wine, and feasted leaving the next day. Many say this legend is true, as the king visited the area in a dispute involving the castle, and it was settled in Sir Den's favor with the king. Today, you'd never know the events happened here, as the castle sits empty and forgotten in the swampy field before us. On the first approach, it's a large gray square mass with large dark holes on its sides. There's a new mode of mud animal feces and water mixed with rocks from the smashed entrances. Originally only one of these existed, and most of these holes seem to be expanded from higher up windows. The surrounding field can visibly be seen to be lower and in fact is often flooded surrounding the castle with water. The field of rocks shows just how much was removed to make these new entrances. Unfortunately, I later learned we missed something. There is an unusual, very narrow, hidden stairway inside the wall that leads to a gaping hole where the inner drawbridge would have been. It's so well disguised, we never see it until after our return. Above you can see the gap where the drawbridge would have crossed, now completely impassable. On the first floor, you can still see the corbels that would have supported the first floor over the basement floor. The first chamber gives way to the remaining two large rooms for storing wine and food. Some of the fine stonework is still left on the inside. This arched window would have allowed defenders to fire arrows at men crossing the moat, but would have been useless against the cannons of later periods.
So how did this castle come to be abandoned and so stripped of its stonework? Over the centuries, the Den family continued to live in the castle and hid Catholic priests there from persecution in the 1610s. In 1613, the Dens and Archdeacons fought again over the land ownership. The Dens, however, remained in power holding much land by the 1630s. However, in 1650, it all came crashing down when Grenon was attacked by Cromwell, who was fighting the quickly dispersing forces of their lord, the Duke of Ormond, who tried to stop his advance. The local Thomastown garrison fled to the castle and spent just two days under siege before surrendering and agreeing never again to oppose the English. From here, the owning family, led by Thomas Den, went into exile in Connaught in 1653, where they became bandits. The castle under new owners stood in good shape afterwards, being described as having a stable, orchard, fishing pond, mill, and garden, and being second only in importance to Kilkenny Castle in its county. However, by the 1800s it decayed and the carved stone was stolen from the entranceways to make room for cattle to enter, and the outer walls were removed along with all the ruined buildings. Once one of the finest castles in Kilkenny and home to a legend of a man redeemed through his humor and wit, the ruin is now a mere home to cattle and stripped of all ornament. The original entrance and three lone windows stare into the distance as we depart this place. Join us next time as we explore a series of two amazing abandoned mansions built by the same family and now lying in majestic ruins. If you're already subscribed, please don't forget to hit the bell icon below to be notified of our upcoming explorations. Until next time.